Hello everyone, welcome to BLW Oasis Online. I am your lovely host and reader. And I'm Alvin and I'm so excited to have you join us for today's segment. Okay. You know, I don't know about you guys, but there's no other place to be than in the presence of the Lord. That's very true. And before we dive into it, please like, subscribe and, and share, share this your video. video. Please be sure to uh, send it to your friends. And another thing I want to let us know is as we come to listen to today's service, okay. sit down, remove all distractions, make sure that your heart is in this place because what the Lord has for you is going to be amazing in this service. Our theme for today's service is how to pray effectively. Is yes. there anything you're looking forward to in this service? Actually, I'm really looking forward to the Rhapsody segment. And I'm looking forward to the prayer segment. Praise the Lord. Right now, I'm going to be leading us in a time of prayer. Lord, we thank you for today's service. We thank you that even as we come here to join, we thank you, Lord, that our hearts are ready to receive. We thank you, Lord, that our lives have a testament of your word, a testament of your power, and our faith comes to us. Yes, we shall truly learn how to pray, not just to pray, but to really pray effectively and become change agents of your power in our world. In Jesus' name, and all of us say, Amen, amen and Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, right now, we're going to be having a segment of the Rhapsody, which is coming up next. Stay tuned and stay blessed. Enjoy! Hi everyone, my name is Nana, and I'm going to be taking you through the Rhapsody of Realities article for today. Our topic for today is, the dynamics have changed. And our opening scripture is taken from Colossians 2 verse 9, and it says, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Let's start. One remarkable distinction between Jesus and the prophets of old is that Jesus had the fullness of the Godhead dwelling in him. The Holy Spirit was within him, but the prophets only had the Holy Spirit come upon them from time to time. For example, we read the story in Judges 6 when Gideon was chosen by God to deliver Israel from the Midianites. The Bible says, But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and he blew a trumpet. And Abizar, correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> was gathered after him. Judges 6 verse 34. Also, in the 14th chapter, we find the story of Samson, who encountered a young lion while on his way to Timnath. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him, enabling him to tear the lion apart as he would have torn a kid. Judges 14 verse 6. In 1 Samuel 10 verse 10, Before Saul became king, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he prophesied among the prophets. Also, read the story of David in 1 Samuel 16 verse 13. After Samuel anointed David as the future king of Israel, the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. But the dynamics have changed today. Praise God. We're in a generation of Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit doesn't come on us like he did with those of the Old Testament. Now he lives in us in his fullness now he resides in us so we no longer have to like wait for him to come upon us no he lives within us so we can he he's already at work in us the holy spirit lives in you in his maximum capacity and entirety just like paul said about jesus in colossians 1 verse 19 for it pleased the father that in him should all fullness dwell in the next chapter, Paul also reiterated, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Colossians 2 verse 9, that's the reference. Then in the very next verse, he was quick to add that we are complete in him. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Colossians 2 verse 10. So today, just like Jesus, when you walk the streets, it's with the fullness of the Godhead. When you go about your day, when you're in class, when you're in your bedroom, when you're going out, wherever you're going to, know that you're walking with the fullness of the Godhead within you at its maximum capacity. So it's not like, oh, the Holy Spirit came upon you in like halves or something like that. No, the Holy Spirit is in you fully, constantly, 24-7, 365 days a year. The Holy Spirit resides within you. Hallelujah, praise God. 
God Almighty in his fullness lives, walks, and talks in you. Can't you see that you're not an ordinary person? You're a God-carrying vessel filled with his fullness and doing extraordinary things. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now we're going to go into the prayer. So repeat after me. Dear Father, I thank you for the indwelling of your Holy Spirit within me. I'm a God-carrying vessel replete with the maximum load of God. I'm not an ordinary person. I am a vessel of divine power. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Amen. Praise God. That was such a beautiful article. And now that you've heard that, go about your day knowing that the, the, the Godhead dwells in you fully to its maximum capacity. So you no longer have to wait for, to be, for the Holy Spirit to um, manifest itself upon you. Now you carry him with you wherever you're going, all that you do. And you have complete access to his complete ability. Praise God. For an even more interactive Rhapsody session, you can join us at Rap in our Rhapsody Club. We meet Monday to Saturday, 8 a.m. and 6 p.m., whichever time is more convenient for you. The link will be displayed on the screen and you can hop in during those times and we'll be right there discussing the Rhapsody article for the day. Thank you and we'll be moving on to the next session. Welcome back. We're going to spend some time in prayer. And the scripture is from Daniel chapter 4, verse 36 to 37. And it says, At the same time, my reason returned unto me, and for the glory of the kingdom of God, mine honor and brightness returned unto me, and my counselors and, the, and my Lord sought unto me, and I was established in the kingdom, and my excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment and those that walk in his pride is able to abase. As we begin to pray, I want us to get our minds and hearts into today's prayer session. Mm. We're going to be praying in tongues. And for those of you that do not pray in tongues, you can pray in your understanding. We're going to be praying honestly for leaders who have been deceived by evil men and who themselves work evil, that godly reasoning will be given to them and that they will walk in righteousness, praise God, making decisions that favor their people and the gospel of Christ. Begin to pray right now. Le Brazil, le Brasilanta palataya, zelim Brazalu kapalande, ivradus de malabra shalatea, mali brazumbre kelete, jalum Brazilente barakaya, zanto paria parada. Thank you, Jesus, for our leaders of our nations. Thank you, Lord Barakalata, that the veils of the enemy upon their eyes may be removed, that they may receive the gospel into their hearts. Barika lambo kolobadia, that they may make decisions that favor the gospel. Malibra zumbre kelete, jalibra zumbe kelia parada, zalibra sha de balata, zalibra kadarabadus de beletia, jalibra ste malakata, that the word of God will prevail in our cities, that the word of God will prevail in our times, la brasula taya, in our schools, malibra kata, yes, in our country, la brasalata, begin to speak over your country, begin to speak over your school, begin to speak over your workplace, parakalata, jalibra ste balata, that the gospel is prevailing, that the gospel is reaching that place. Zalum Brazilante Balata, Jali Brese Baracusta, Jali Bracata, every evil law that is against the gospel, Jala Bracalata shall be revoked in the name of Jesus. Bali Brasha Limbrecate, Zelim Brazule Catia, Baruca Silente Balata, Evraduste Valica, Varinde Pelesha, Jala Bracaduste Melete, 
Jeli braka de la base, van brozule bericata. Come on, lift up your voice. Jala brasa limbre kia, jeli brasa lita, jalimba colobase kia, ambre dile varica, zalum brezilante, ivraduste melekia, varroco silente, ivresha la bracata, zeli braca de la bosa, embresha licata. Yes, Eva will not prevail. Zalim Rasha Labata, Zalim Grezunda Kalta, because as long as we are in the world, we are the light of the world. Marika Labusa Kata. Yes, we stand in the gap for our leaders. Yes, we stand in the gap for our presidents. Yes, we stand in the gap for our councilmen. Yes, we stand in the gap, Marataya, for those in parliament in Jesus' name, that we break the influence of the evil one. Variko Sakalibe, Ebradu Semalata, let the light of the gospel, let every well of darkness, every controlling power over them be removed in Jesus' name. Come on, begin to pray. Lift up your voice. Vali basilente, Evra manusta palate, Evra duja barikata, O marabase kilamante, Evra shalante kia, A maribe shilataya, Mambrazilente valika, Jalabre keleta, Evra balibosata, That gospel prevails, Varika la barata, Begin to speak over that school. That the Lord has, uh, has put you right now. Begin to speak over your classmates. Varika Lata. That that gospel prevails. Begin to speak over your leaders. Varika Lavala Tuste. Leb Rasha. Begin to speak over your professors. Begin to speak Alabataya. Over your managers. Galabataya. Begin to speak over your presidents. The leaders that God has put over you where you stay. Jali Brakalata Rabata. Breaking the power of the evil one up, uh, over them. Zali Bresha Lata. Leb Razundo Kaladia. Come on, lift up your voice. Araba se kilante. Ema radasha la teha. Ema riba se kilanta balate. Ivradu se melia. Paraka shilente. Ivradu se melakia. Jali parota. Mam brazile kadia. Avradu se balata. Zeli brasha la tosa. Ivre marika la ta. Zeli brakata. That the will of God will be established. That because you are in that place, balata rabata. Darkness cannot prevail. That because you came to that place, God will move into that city because you are there. Begin to speak right now, Barata. Declare, prophesy, prophesy, Kalabalata. The Bible says you shall declare a word and it shall come to pass. Come on, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice and pray and declare, Barata, that as long as I am here, darkness will not prevail over my leaders. Darkness will not prevail, Kalabalata, over those that have put in jurisdiction over me. Come on, lift up your voice. Jali Bakilanta, Maru Sande Palia, Jila Baku Sakate, Jali Baru Sataya, Imbradu Yekete, Abradu Shalata, let's make power available, Abradu Shekila Mante, Imbradu Yabarata, Zali Brakaladise, Mariba Shakaya, Imbradu Semia Kata, Amaraba Shekila Nase, Imbradu Selima Kaya, Abraka Libestaka, Aliba Sote, Ibrazunte. Malaba Shekia Manto, Evra Salantea, Barika Shalampa, Ivradus de Malikia, Ambrazunte Melete, Jali Braca da Bassa, Embra Shalata. Come on, lift up your voice and declare Jali Brasa la Balata. Mambrazule Kremali da Baraka. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this powerful time of prayer. The Bible tells us to pray. La Brazum Brekelebata. We think that even as we prayed, men come to the light of the gospel. Lord, we thank you for our leader. We thank you for those that you've put in the place of government over us. We thank you, Lord, that the, that, that the hand of the enemy may be broken over them. That the gospel will prevail in our schools. Yes, in our cities. Yes, yes everywhere around us. That laws that are in favor of the gospel may be established because of us. We give you praise and we thank you in Jesus' matchless name. And all of us say, Amen. 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 Go away.
praises be God our sovereign ruler the one who reigns forever to you all praises be to you all praises be omnipotent ever present to you all praises Praises, God, our sovereign ruler. God, our sovereign ruler. You're the one who reigns forever. To you, to you, all praises. For the wicked, nothing we proclaim. We proclaim. Um, right now we're going to be taking a segment of the offerings. 
Uh, we're going to be having the details on the screen, and then Rita will be reading us a scripture right now. Okay, so the scripture is Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, and says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heavens, Amen. I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great, you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. Praise God. Isn't it interesting how he says in the scripture that we should put Lord, by us giving, we're putting the Lord to the test. Meaning that as we're giving our blessing, yes. this offering is a testament of our faith. And as we give it out, we're giving it as a testament to the power of God. Mm -hmm. And I believe that today, as you give your offering, as you receive the word of God, we're honoring the word of God by giving this offering today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen.
Hello and welcome again to this beautiful episode of Oasis Online Service. My name is Pastor DG and it is my privilege and honor to be bringing you God's word today. I'm going to be sharing with you today on the subject of prayer. But before I get into that, I'd like us to spend just a few minutes to pray over our offerings and to also pray to open up this segment of the service. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have today to bring you our offerings, our tithes, our special seeds, all that we have brought in this service today to recognize your presence and to honor you with. Lord, we invoke upon them the blessing of the Spirit for multiplication, such that they multiply for the purpose that they've been received. And we pray that they multiply back unto each and every one of us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, are poured into our accounts by means beyond this realm. Thank you, precious Heavenly Father, even for the word that we're about to receive. For now, our hearts and our minds are open to receive your word with faith and with gladness of heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Well, I said that I'm going to be sharing with you um, some important thoughts today on the subject of prayer. And I'm really excited about this because this is something that can literally transform your walk with God, transform your existence, your life in an instance of time. So we're going to get right into it. I want to start off with Luke chapter 11, and I want to show you something very important there that seem, that, that begins to underscore the importance of prayer. Luke chapter 11, verse 1. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, once Jesus was in a certain place praying, as he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. It says, Lord, teach us to pray. Now, this is a very important thing now in the, in the King James. It says, Master, teach us to pray. But this is a very important thing for uh, a very simple reason. These were Jewish men. Prayer was very much a part of, was very much a part of their culture as it was a part of their religion. Understand this. They were taught to pray from when they were children. And they prayed several times for different purposes. They had different kinds of prayers. But for some reason, they observed this man the Lord Jesus Christ, who is another Jew just like them. And then they, they, see, they seek to find out from him, how do you pray? This is a very important thing because it seems to suggest that the Lord Jesus Christ had different results than the disciples were used to when he prayed. Now, why am I saying this? Because it is important that your prayer be effective. If prayer is not effective, if prayer is not productive as it should be, or if it doesn't achieve its purpose, it becomes a waste of time. So we'll talk in a few minutes here today about some of the things that could make prayer to be not as effective as it should be. But let's start off with something very simple. Someone's watching me and thinking to themselves, what even is prayer? What is prayer? And I mean, very simple. Uh, one of the simplest definitions, you know, when I was a kid uh, in um, primary school or what you would call elementary school and so in, in this part of the world, um, they gave us a very simple definition of prayer. They said prayer is man talking to God and God talking to man. And then they broke it down for us even better. It says, prayer is me talking to God and God talking to me. And it really is that simple. Prayer is communication with deity, communication with God Almighty. That's it at the most fundamental level of it. But because it is communication, it is important that you note that it is for us as Christians, it is 
a two-way street. Now, I say particularly as Christians because we are not called into a religion. Now, if you want to learn more about that, I have a whole uh, message here on this platform as well called the end of religion. We're not called to religion. We are called to life. We are called to a relationship. We're called to substance. So as such... Our prayer, now people pray all over the world, different religions pray, but only in Christ Jesus do we have a guarantee of our prayers not only being heard every time we pray, but we also have a guarantee that God, excuse me, that God is able and willing to speak back to us. So that is prayer. Now, In further understanding prayer, another thing that I want you to make note of is that prayer is actually the means by which God brings his power to bear in the affairs of men. Now, this is very important. I'm sure you've heard time and again the very popular question, which is, if there is a God, why does he let bad things happen in the world? Why Are children dying of cancer if there is a loving God? If you claim that there's a loving God, why are these evil things happening in the world? But the answers are not far-fetched. In fact, the scriptures are very clear as to the answer to that question. When you read from the beginning in the book of Genesis, you realize that the world was committed to man. It was given to man and man was put in charge. It was entrusted as a gift of trust to man and for a definite period of time. What do I mean by that? Imagine that you took up Uh, an apartment, you rented an apartment complex, or well, not not the whole complex, but an apartment, maybe a one bedroom apartment, two bedroom apartment, and you told that this is going to cost you $2,000 a month. The day that you signed that lease, that apartment became, uh, it ceased to be completely under the authority of the landlord, who is in fact the owner. For as long as the lease is in effect, you have the authority over the space that you are in. You have the authority over that one bedroom or two bedroom apartment. You're the one that has the authority. In fact, for the landlord to come in, he has to give you prior notice. It's the same way with the world. God willed, gave the world to man. As a gift of trust. And for him to come in to do anything in the earth while that lease is on, he's going to need the invitation of man. Prayer is the means by which we give God the invitation to do in our world the good things that he, that he being a loving father, the good things that he seeks to do for mankind. Prayer is the invitation by which we bring him in. I want to show you something very quickly in Ephesians chapter 6. And I'm going to read Ephesians 6 in the Amplified Classic version now, um, verse 18. Pay close attention to this. It says, Pray at all times, on every occasion, in every season, in the spirit, with all manner of prayer and entreaty. To that end, keep alert and watch with strong purpose and perseverance, interceding in behalf of all the saints, God's consecrated people. Now, the part that I wanted to emphasize here is this. It says, pray at all times. This is the reason why we have to pray at all times. Because prayer brings us back into connection with our maker. Prayer brings us direction and guidance and insight. Without prayer, you're going to be walking blind. God never intended for us to go at life and to go at this world and the circumstances of life alone. He planned to walk with us. He planned to give us insight. That's the purpose of prayer. Now let's discuss some important ground rules of prayer. Let's say you're just starting to pray or you've been praying before. These are things that are going to help you 
uh, even in terms of the consciousness that they bring to you in making your prayers more effective. Number one, prayer, especially in the New Testament, after the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, prayer must be done in the name of Jesus. Now, uh, you heard me pray earlier, and when I was done praying, I said, in Jesus' name, we've prayed, or I've prayed, amen. Why is that important? Remember, the work that the Lord Jesus Christ did in the earth that he completed and was successful at was what we refer to as a substitutionary work. That means he took our place on the cross and in hell and in resurrection that we might take his place of authority. That means that now that he's risen and he's seated at the right hand of authority of God in the heavens, while he's sitting there, he's sitting there representing us much in the same way that we are here on earth representing him. So every time that you say in Jesus name I've prayed, what you're declaring to God the Father, what you're declaring to all of heaven is that this thing that has been said should be received as though the Lord Jesus Christ himself made that request. This is why prayer works every time. And why it's important for you to be mindful of it. It is not just a technicality. Saying in Jesus' name I prayed or uh, um, invoking that use of the name of Jesus is not something to be joked or to, to be played with. It is the license that we have to audience with heaven. That's the license to audience with heaven. Let's take a look at John chapter 16. And I want to read to you very quickly, um, verse 23. John chapter 16, verse 23. And I'm going to read this from the NLT version. And it says here, this is the Lord Jesus speaking. We're close to the time when he's about to die on the cross. He says, at that time, Jesus is talking to his disciples. At that time, talking about after, after his work, his finished works, or, or rather well, after he's accomplished the work of salvation. He says, at that time, you won't need to ask me for anything. I tell you the truth. You will ask the Father directly and he will grant your requests because you use my name. He will grant your request because you use my name. Very important in prayer. Number two, prayer must be done in faith or by faith. What is faith? Faith is very excellently described, excellently described in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. I'm, I'm going to read that to you. Um, I, I like to read from the King James Version when I'm reading this because it, it's such a perfect definition. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That is, faith gives substance to unseen reality. So prayer must be done in faith. That is, when you pray, you must believe that you were heard. In fact, um, let's take a look at verse 6 in that same Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 6. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him, to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. That, the, that is, he that comes to God must believe that God exists, even though you can't see him. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So faith is a prerequisite in in any of our dealings with God. It says it is impossible to please God without faith, let alone have ongoing communication with him. So faith is the substance of things hoped for. That is, you, you, you did not see the living God when you spoke to him, but you trust that he heard you. And you trust that in accordance with his word, he granted you that which you requested, that which you demanded of him. Mark chapter 11, very quickly now. Mark 11, and I'm going to read from verse 23, and I'll read this from the New Living Translation. Mark 11, 23 into verse 24. And it says here, 
the words of the Lord Jesus again. I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you have received it, it will be yours. You can pray for anything anything and if if you he says if you believe that you have received it it will be yours this is the element of faith in prayer now a very important thing that i i want to draw your attention to here is someone's thinking oh i don't have faith that's my problem no 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 not if you're born again that is what do i mean by not if you're born again if you are born again if you gave your heart to christ if you accepted jesus christ to be lord of your life and you received eternal life to your spirit through that prayer of salvation which i will lead some of you in at the end of this um session this message if you have received that salvation if you have said that prayer faith has already been imparted to your spirit remember the lord jesus said if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed the faith that brought you salvation is the prerequisite faith that you need there is not one christian on earth that does not have faith you have faith regardless of how small it may be which you will build on upon it you will add more to it you will strengthen it but regardless of how small it may be it is just enough to accomplish the things that you desire. I want to show that to you that everyone has been dealt the measure of faith. I want to show that to you in Romans chapter 12. And I'm reading from verse 3. And I'm going to be reading this from the King James Version. Romans 12 verse 3. For I say through the grace given unto me, this is the Apostle Paul speaking, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, humbly, according as, listen to this, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. According as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. That is God, and he says, definite article, the, he didn't say, he, he, didn't, he didn't say a measure of faith. He says, the measure of faith. God has given to every man, every man that is in Christ, the measure of faith. So you don't need to think to yourself, oh, that's my problem. No, you can build upon your faith, but you have just enough faith. Number three, and I mean, just enough faith to have your prayers answered. Number three, prayer must be according to God's word. Mm. It says, I, I hope you heard that. Prayer must be according to God's word. It must be according to, that is, you are going to have to make your request in accordance with the scriptures. What do I mean by that? Imagine I started to pray to God and I said, God, uh, save me, save me. After I've received salvation, save me, save me. That's an illegal communication because the one that has gotten born again, that has received salvation or that gave their heart to Christ no longer needs salvation. You are, you are being born in Christ. Or I'm praying, you know, um, the kind of prayer that, you know, some Christians around the world pray, uh, oh, uh, Lord, I will not go um, unless you follow me or unless you go with me. But he said that I will never leave you nor forsake you. He already told you that he will. The Lord Jesus said, when you receive the Holy Spirit, he will be with you for all time. Why are you praying again? Holy Spirit, come. He said he will never leave you. Prayer must be in accordance to the word of God. You ask, you know, when I was a kid, I used to pray um, a very interesting prayer because I always thought to myself, you know, um, the whole world, I mean, um, I don't want anyone to go to hell. So whenever I prayed, I'll pray, Lord, forgive, my, forgive me of my sins and everybody in the world sins. But that's not the way that works. He already did something about everybody in the world sins. 
The prayer that I should have been praying was different than that. If I was concerned about the salvation of the lost, there's a prayer that I should pray, but it wasn't that prayer that I was praying. Prayer must be in accordance. It must be mindful. It must recognize the word of God. Now, before I get into the, the, the next part of this, it is important. I, I, I really want to call on you today to learn to take the prayer route. Now, this is, um, it is not consistent with the training that you have through the world. It is something you will have to re-educate your spirit about. Taking the prayer route. What do I mean by taking the prayer route? Learning to pray under all circumstances. When you're happy, pray. Prayers of thanksgiving. When you're, you're feeling sad, learn to pray. When you're feeling not worthy, learn to pray. When you're feeling elated and hopeful for the future, learn to pray. Learn to take the prayer route. I want to show you something in Philippians chapter 4. The book of Philippians 4, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation from verse 6 into verse 7. I'll read this very quickly here. It says, don't worry about anything. This is such a powerful instruction. And you, and you have a choice to make in it. You can decide that you're not going to live a worry-filled life. It says, don't worry about anything. It says, in fact, the King James says, be anxious for nothing. Do not take anxiety. Do not accept anxiety over anything. It says, instead, pray about everything. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Learn to take the prayer route. Before worrying, pray. Before giving advice, pray. Before taking advice, pray. Before making major decisions, pray. Learn to take the prayer out. Look at what he says about the person that does this for seven. He says, then you will experience God's peace. My goodness. My life is filled with peace because of prayer. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. He said, his peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Brother, sister, take the prayer out. You know, um, the, 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 there was a time, you know, uh, um, some events were going on in the world and some Christians, some of us were calling on people to pray about it. And um, there was a rebuttal from another group of Christians. And what they said was, you can't pray alone. You need, you need to take action. But very quickly, we responded to them and we said, prayer is action. Look throughout the scriptures. Prayer is action. In the face of dire, intense circumstances, men and women of God resorted to prayer, not to negotiation with men. Not, I mean, there's nothing wrong with protests, but before, before protests, pray. And really pray. Before taking the route of applying the tools of this world, pray. I'm going to give you three very quick pointers because on um, the topic of how to uh, pray effectively, there's a book by the man of God, Pastor Grace, that I highly recommend. It goes into detail about the different types of prayer, the modus operandi surrounding those prayers, and how to be effective in prayer, being mindful that they are different kinds of prayer. You want to get a hold of that book. It's available at loveworldbooks.com or .org. Um, it's not quite you know, coming to mind now. I hope we can put it on the screen, but it's Love World Books. If you want to get a hold of that book, How to Pray Effectively, or you can post in the chat section, you can send us a message and we'll try to get, we'll work on getting you a copy, but it's a very important tool. But I want to just give you three very simple points on how to become more effective in your prayers, especially if you've been praying before. Number one, Understand that your right to answers when you pray has to do with the righteousness of God that has been bequeathed to you. That is, um, 
you are as righteous as the Lord Jesus Christ is before God. That's how he sees you. You must have faith in that regardless of what wrongs you may have done or how worthy or unworthy you may feel. Bible says to come boldly to the throne of grace and understand this, that even the righteousness that God gave you free of charge is a product of his love for us. So when you come to God in prayer, be mindful that you are talking to a God that is head over heels in love with you. You're talking to a God that uh, um, sees you perfect. You're talking to a God that loves you so deeply. That's that. That sees you as one that could 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 do. You know, you know, you know how you have such people that you love so much they could do no wrong. That's the way that God sees you. Come to Him mindful of that love. In your prayers and in your requests, have in mind that He is the one that asked you. He invited you, gave you an, a, a, a a blank check, inviting you to come to Him in prayer. What an expression of love. And that means when you're praying to him, don't let it be so formal that it puts a distance between you and him. The Lord Jesus prayed, he said, my father that is in heaven. He called him father. The Jews, the disciples of the Lord Jesus had never heard anybody refer to, the, to, to, to God like that. Let him be your father. Let him be your friend. Let him be your lover. Let him be the every, the, the, um, because of how much he loves you, let your love for him be expressive and rest in his love for you. Bible says perfect love casts out fear. That is when you come to God, being mindful of his love, there will be, I mean, there's, of course, you will have godly reverence, but it will not be a fear of him. Number two, when you want to be effective in your prayer life, set a consistent prayer schedule. This is a very simple but very powerful one because consistency in any relationship, consistent communication is how you build any strong relationship. Not that you pray today and then you pray in two days or you pray the next time you pray is going to be on Sunday. Set a time. You may start off just, you know, someone said uh, 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 a very beautiful formula that you could use when you're getting started. Write down 10 things you're thankful for and uh, 10 things that you would uh, like God to do for you. And then begin with the 10 things that you're thankful for. You may start off with only 15 minutes of prayer. One minute each on, on some of the things, 15 to 20 minutes, one minute each on the things that you're talking about. You're talking, you're, 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 you're discussing with the Lord. Begin. Begin. Oh, praise God. Praise God. And another thing that's also very powerful, learn to journal your prayers. It's something that is an expression of faith that you documented what you talked to God about. There are many who pray in the morning and by the time you ask them in the evening, what did they pray about that day? They do not remember. How are they going to receive an answer? Part of the expression of your faith, that that which you've demanded of the Lord, that which you've asked him for, the guidance you've asked for, the wisdom you've asked for, the material things that you've asked for, whatever they may be, or the prayer of intercession that you have made for someone else, Whatever it may be, the faith, it is an expression of your faith to write down those things so that you can remember them once they are accomplished. Very important. And then number three, recognize the different types of prayer. And I'm not going to get into the details of this because I told you earlier that I'd like you to get a hold of the book, How to Pray Effectively. And another book called Praying the Right Way. They'll transform your prayer life completely. You may have been praying for 30 years. I guarantee you that these books will make all the difference with you. But in recognizing the different types of prayer, what's being communicated there is that 
prayer is communication. And because it's communication, we know in our world that there are different types of communication depending on the circumstances. Imagine that I have a best friend that works at the Bank of America, for instance. When I talk with him on a regular day, I can text with him in casual conversation. But if I'm going to the bank where he serves and he's the teller, and I want to communicate to him that I need a thousand dollars out of my bank account, I am going to have to go through the proper means of communication. It does not matter that he's my best friend. When I get into that place and I want to ask him to bring $1,000, that's my money out of my bank account. I can't just yell it from across the room. Hey, uh, John, I need $1,000 out of my account. Bring it. No, I've got to fill out the forms. I've got to swipe my card. I've got to put in my pen. I've got... That's what you need to understand about the different types of prayer, and that book is going to help you. But one of those prayers that um, is emphasized there is praying, uh, praying with the Spirit. That is praying in tongues. This is such a powerful tool that has been given to the believer. Um, if you want to learn more about how to pray in tongues or, or how to receive the Holy Spirit so that you can pray in tongues, uh, or what, it, what are tongues? What is, what is it to pray in tongues? When I say praying in tongues, I'm talking about praying in an, an, an in a heaven in a, in a heavenly language rather that is beyond the language of your mental understanding. If you want to learn more about that, we have a video right here um, on this platform as well that will educate you on that. Oh, praise God! I'm, I trust that you've been tremendously blessed today. Uh, but before I go, if you're watching. And you have not made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You have not stepped into the fatherhood of God. You have not come into the place where you can receive answers to your prayers by right through the use of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But you can change that right now in just one minute. I want you to say this prayer and mean it with all of your heart. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sins. I believe that he was raised from the dead for my justification. I accept Jesus Christ to be the Lord of my life from this day. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. As simple as that prayer is, if he said it, God heard you and it caused something supernatural to happen within you. You are not the person you were a few minutes ago. You are a new creation. All things have passed away. And behold, the new has begun. Let us know if you said that prayer. Post in the comment section. Send us a message. Reach out to us on social media. We would love to share some important uh, materials with you. Free materials that will help you to grow in your journey of faith. I'm going to pray for you right now. I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, that from this day, the influence of Satan is broken from your life forever. Yes, your divine destiny has begun. And I pray that the purpose for which you were born into God's kingdom at this time will be fulfilled in due time. I pray that you will have an understanding of the scriptures more than ever before. And that your spirit will truly be awakened to the fatherhood of Almighty God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Um, for saying that prayer. And I also want to especially appreciate everyone that is watching us for the first time. Let us know in the comment section as well that this is your first time participating in one of our services. We would love to make you welcome. It's a pleasure. We always, we, 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 we're looking to, to share the Oasis love and the Oasis experience 
with you. But my prayer for you as well is that the purpose for which you've encountered this service today will be made apparent in due time in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that the Lord will answer your questions, solve your problems, and bring you to the fulfillment of his divine purpose in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. And I pray for you as well that this week for you is blessed and that God's favor accompanies you everywhere that you go, that his health is perfected in your body. Everyone that is watching, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Remember to let us know what you learned in today's service in the comment section. Also remember to share this with your friends and family members as well who would benefit tremendously from knowing how to pray and how to pray effectively. It's again, Pastor Deji from BRW Oasis. And um, it's been a privilege sharing God's word with you. Until next time, God bless you. Hello everyone and welcome to today's segment of What's Going On? Yes, this is the segment of service where we keep you up to date and informed with everything that's going on in the BLW Oasis family. So make sure you are tuned in and you can participate in all the activities we have going on. Now we have an exciting, exciting program that is coming up. I want to make sure that you have your calendars ready. Watch out for a big announcement. There's a program called Into the Dark Arts. You know, people are always looking for power, right? Going into witchcraft, into horoscopes, like into crystals. We live in a world where people are searching for power from so many different sources. We're going to go deep into where these sources are coming from. Why are people so drawn to that? And what is the true power? You do not want to miss Into the Dark Arts, obviously hosted by The Oasis Online. Praise God. In this month of April, we launched a very special program called Reforge 30. Yes, we are reforging our spirits. It's a spiritual boot camp for 30 days that you want to be a part of. Almost like how you'd go for a physical, you know, boot camp. Same thing, you are exercising your spiritual muscles and really del diving into the word of God and building your faith so strong. And I'm telling you, it's been an amazing time so far, but it's not too late to jump on the wagon and get yourself reforged. So if you want more information, click on the link below and you will have all the resources accessible to you. If you're here and you're new to the family and you're wondering, how do I really understand each of these you know, important doctrines very well? How do I understand the message well? We have a special program for you called Rock Solid Academy, and it's a seven class course free of charge with amazing teachers that will take you through the foundations of the word of God, through the foundations of growing in Christ and how to really develop your relationship with him in this journey. So make sure to sign up for Rock Solid Academy. Make sure to join Rhapsody Club every single day from Monday to Saturday at 8 a.m. or a second option at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. You know, it's an amazing time to join many people all over the world, diving deep into the article for the day and getting so much insight versus when you would have read it by yourself. So make sure to join in Rhapsody Club. If you have any prayer requests or you have so many questions that you want to ask, do not hesitate to reach out to us in the link below. Make sure to follow us on all our social media platforms shown on the screen at theoasis.usa. Interact with all our content and keep up with us. I've been your lovely host, Pastor Danny, and it's always a pleasure to host What's Going On. Bye, guys. What a powerful time in God's presence today. It was such a lovely time. I hope you were blessed because I was blessed. I definitely was. You know, one thing that I learned is how to pray effectively. And I'm sure that many of us are going to have testimonies of God's mm. power. We're going to be seeing miracles. Make sure that you share uh, what you receive from today's service. Make sure that you also like, share, and subscribe. I'm your lovely host and reader. And I'm Alvin. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.